And with this, I would like to say thank you again to Dr. Bay. Thank you. And move on to the last talk in our session, which would be Phil Etzley from ITEMBA Labs in South Africa, so a local player. Are you there, Phil? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, share my screen. Okay, Phil will talk about isoscalar transition in lightish nuclei. And uh, please, Phil, the stage is yours. Great. Um, I'm assuming that you can hear me and the screen is working and everything. Yeah, it looks all fine. Please Great. Go on. Uh, okay, so um, I, I think that uh, I was hoping that some, someone would have uh, introduced a bit. Uh, uh, I think the first talk was hopefully going to um, cover some of this, but I'll, I'll go over it again. Um, so ev everyone knows, I think, the, the, the best known of the, the dipole responses of nuclei, the isovector giant dipole uh, resonance, where um, this, this motion of, of protons and neutrons in antiphase um, results in a... Um, uh, 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 quite a, a strong um, dipole absorption of, uh, or emission of nuclei. Uh, and there's many applications of, of um, the isovector giant dipole resonance in, in various areas of physics. Um, and we do, with the K600, spend a lot of time studying the uh, isovector giant dipole resonance. And, and I think particularly I'd note uh, Lindsay's and Max's uh, papers on, um, on the isovector giant dipole resonance in in uh, various different nuclei, uh, and we also have a, a proposal to, to do some more measurements on this. But for, for this talk, I want to concentrate on other dipole transitions. Um, so in recent years, there's been a lot of activity on these other dipole modes um, where, where there's, say, octopole, um, uh, octopole deformation in, in quadrupole deformed systems, which results in low-lying or minor states the pygmy dipole resonance, um, the low energy enhancement um, scissor resonances. Uh, and uh, in this case, um, I, I'm going to concentrate on toroidal, um, the prediction of toroidal modes in nuclei and on um, asymmetric clustering. So uh, just to um, introduce clustering for people who may not be aware or who want some specifics as to what I'm talking about, it's this idea that nuclei can be formed with some substructure so that that magnesium 24, for example, could be described as neon 20 plus an alpha particle or carbon 12 plus carbon 12. And, and, and the, the previous speaker um, was showing silicon 28, um, but this is the same Aikido diagram um, and, you, uh, and, and similar structures sh uh, should exist in both cases. I, I now realize that if, if I'd known what was in the previous talk, I would have included the spectra on silicon, not on magnesium. It would have been quite a nice progression, but anyway. Um, so the, the, the signatures typically for, for alpha clustering are things like large alpha particle widths. Um, rotational bands seems, seems as these structures tend to be strongly deformed. Um, we also expect to see strong isoscalar monopole transitions to the, the, the lowest energy of the cluster states. And that the cluster state should come at a, around the associated threshold. Um, so here's an example in magnesium 24. Um, and the, the strong transition here, which is slightly hidden by the line, um, and there's actually, there's two strong states um, just below 14 MeV um, that aren't quite resolved, um, lie quite, quite close to the cluster thresholds. As it happens in magnesium 24, the, the carbon 12 plus carbon 12 and the oxygen 16 plus two alpha and oxygen 16 plus beryllium eight thresholds all lie very close together. Uh, and then there's there's a, a strong monopole strength at around that threshold. But um, clusters aren't just uh, monopole states. If you have um, a system which uh, is asymmetric, um, there is a, a parity inversion doublet. So there's there's the state that you get by looking at the mirror image, um, and this uh, is predicted to be to be also strongly populated in in isoscalar transitions. Um, and so when we look at, say, alpha particle scattering, which should populate these, these isoscalar transitions strongly, we should look at the monopole transitions to the, to the zero plus states, the, the lowest states in the, in the, of, of the cluster bands. But we should also look at the, the, the dipole states, which go to the, the asymmetric 
structures. And this is especially important for systems like magnesium-24, where carbon-12, carbon-12 clusters are symmetric. So that there, there isn't a, um, an inverted mirror image. Um, and so for some clusters, there shouldn't be a parity partner. There should just be um, a, a single um, monopole state and the, the band built on that. For the toroidal states, there have been some recent predictions using QRPA um, from uh, Valentin Nestorenko and his collaborators, um, and also some AMD calculations which su suggest that similar structures um, should be the case. Uh, and this is a, a kind of internal mode um, with, within nuclei, which is, is uh, rather different to the compressional mode that, that we would expect for, for something like the, the asymmetric cluster. Um, structures. The experimental probe, which is is best, uh, well, the, the experimental probe to confirm whether toroidal states exist is electron scattering. And you can see um, this is from one of the uh, uh, Valentin and, and his collaborators' papers where um, they see there are differences in the electron scattering when you include the, the toroidal mode or, or exclude it. But the experimental signature here is very weak. Um, so we are looking with alpha alpha prime to look for candidates for toroidal states, um, which which nuclei may have um, these 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 toroidal states, um, and uh, to to try to populate them um, in advance of any any measurements with say electrons. So um, we are are looking for. Uh, uh, candidates for toroidal um, and cluster dipole states in a number of nuclei. Uh, we, we, what we had was, was data that was actually intended to just look for the monopole states, but we, um, we kind of mined the previous data we had to look for the, for the dipole states as well. Uh, and in this case, um, the three nuclei that we're looking at have slightly different characters. So magnesium-24 and silicon-28 are both self-conjugate whereas magnesium-26 has, has two more neutrons than protons. Um, there's different deformation. I think the, the deformation in magnesium-26 is fairly well defined, but in, in magnesium-24 uh, is fairly well defined, but in magnesium-26 it's not. Uh, and the sign of the deformation in silicon-28 is different. So there's a number of different nuclei with different expected behaviors for, for, for us to look at their, their, monopole, uh, their dipole strength. Um, so the experiment, uh, I will cover very briefly. If you have more questions, uh, I think ask them at the end. Um, so we're using the, the Q2D K600 magnetic spectrometer at Attember Labs. So uh, we extract a 200 MeV alpha particle beam. It's transmitted down a dispersion matched beam line onto uh, a target at the K600 target position. Um, the reaction products are then momentum analyzed in the spectrometer and based on where they hit the focal plane, we can measure their energy. We can identify them on the basis of the time of flight and the energy deposition at the focal plane. For zero degree measurements, the beam passes into the spectrometer and uh, is transmitted through and passes into this beam stop past the high momentum side of the focal plane. Um, for the four degree measurement at, at small angles, the beam stop is located on the front of the entrance quadrupole next to the collimator. If we put the beam stop in the chamber, the background on the focal plane is, is horrendous. So the, the beam stop is, is located just, um, just next to the collimator. Looking for monopoles and, and dipoles with the K600 is rather easy because um, the, the differential cross sections have very clear diffraction patterns. They have very, very clear shapes. Um, and for the, here, the, the, the blue curve um, is, the, uh, the mono, uh, is a monopole state and the, the red curve is a dipole state. And you can see that the minimum um, in, the, uh, in the monopole case is, is at, at small angles, say, th this is center of mass angle, but it's about three to four degrees in the lab frame. Um, and uh, for the dipole state, it, it's dying away when we're at about five or six degrees. Um, and just to convince you, I hope that, um, that, that we can see these states. Here are some spectra. On the left-hand side is for monopole states. On the right-hand side is for dipole states. And I've drawn some green arrows on to try to convince you that, that there are these states. But my favorite is this one, which is the, the, the third zero plus state in magnesium 24, which effectively is turned off when you, you measure at zero, 
when you look at zero degrees, it's huge. When you look at, at um, three to four degrees, it's it's more or less non-existent. So this is a, a very clear signature of of, um, of of monopole states, and we can see there's a couple of new monopole states at between 15 and 16 MeV, and the isoscalar giant monopole resonance up here. And similarly for dipole states, you can see um, there's a there's a nice state just below 12 MeV that that has um, the expected characteristics. Um, oh, we, we, we do actually do the um, Earth DWBA analysis for these states, but no one wants to see that. It's, it's really not, not worth spending time on. Um, so comparing the, um, the distribution of the, the isoscalar dipole strength, we, we are comparing the two models. One of them is QRPA, the calculations uh, being done by Valentin, and uh, Kimura-san performed some uh, calculations with uh, anti-symmetrized molecular dynamics and generator coordinate method. In the AMD calculation should include the model space of the QRPA, um, but it should also include some more complex correlations, um, for example, cluster models. Um, the problem with the AMD calculations is that they tend to overpredict predict the uh, excitation energies and we shift down the excitation energies to match the energy of the first um, the first excited uh, zero plus state in, in the various nuclei. Um, there, is, there was a recent paper on the archive from Kanada Enyo and uh, cl a collaborator um, with looking at some excited states in, in similar nuclei. Um, and it looks like the, the, a uniform shift may not, be, may not be the right prescription, but we don't know what is the right prescription. So that's a, a separate problem. Um, so looking at uh, magnesium-24, um, one of the, the interesting things we see here is that there's, there's a, a few candidates at low excitation energies for um, this possible, uh, the, the predicted um, lowest k equals one state. So this would be the, the toroidal state. Um, but there are more states at low excitation energies in the data than there are in QRPA. This may just be a function of the QRPA not catching all of the more complex configurations. Um, notably, at higher excitation energies, we see fewer um, dipole states. This is just a limitation of the experiments. We, we, we see the strongly populated states. We don't really see, um, we don't really see the, the very weak ones. Um, they get lost in the background. Uh, the resolution is about 70 keV, so you, you can't really go below that. Um, in the case of magnesium-26, it looks like the, the dipole strength is, is less concentrated. Um, and we think that this is because of the, the kind of less well-defined prolate deformation in, in magnesium-26, and so that the strength is, is more spread out. There is, I would say, a qualitative agreement between the, the experimental distribution of the strength and the, um, and the calculation in the if you compare the, the strong concentration in magnesium-24 to the rather more diffuse concentration in magnesium-26, there does seem to be, be some, some good agreement there. Um, many of the one minor states that we see in, in these data have also been seen in gamma ray inelastic scattering um, done, I think, in Darmstadt, but I can't quite remember. Um, and in silicon-28, um, the QRPA calculations really push the, the dipole strength to much higher excitations. Um, the, the origin of the low-lying dipole strength is then unclear. We think that it's possibly the, the asymmetric clusters um, uh, in, in magnesium, uh, in, in silicon-28. Uh, but again, this isn't quite clear. Uh, the, the problem is, again, that we have to take these predictive excitation energies and shift them, um, but quite where they should be shifted to is, is unclear. Um, however, there is, there is one strong prediction that comes out from, um, from the QRPA models, which is that, um, that there shouldn't be a toroidal state at low excitation energies in, in silicon-28. Um, and, uh, okay, so uh, it, the summary of the um, results for the uh, uh, for the, the, the dipole strength, um, what we do see is that there's a, 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 a prediction of a number of different origins of dipole strengths. Um, and 
the AMD calculations certainly predict that there are many states which have both toroidal and compressional character, so asymmetric clustering character. Um, the, the, the main prediction from the QRPA is that if a toroidal mode exists, it's most likely to exist in magnesium-24 concentrated in a single state but that in, in magnesium-26, it's fragmented, pushed to higher excitation energies. And so detection of, of something in, in these nuclei would be much more difficult. Um, there does seem to be fairly strong support from the AMD calculations, which I've not really shown the results of, but um, for the um, for asymmetric clustering. One of the things that we have noticed is the narrowness of some of the states um, related to clustering. And I'll just show um, something on the next slide about that in a in a minute. Uh, one thing that I've also omitted from um, from here is uh, some of the dipole strength comes from the k equals one component of of um, states with a uh, an octopole um, nature. Um, if you're interested in that, um, here is the reference to to the paper. Um, it, I think it's a bit too complicated to be getting into now, so I've I've kind of uh, left it to one side. Um, but in case you were wondering, um, there there is some evidence for for one minus strength from the k equals one component of octopole states. Um, we also have data on two of these nuclei, magnesium twenty four and silicon twenty eight, with the K six hundred and the cake, um, which is the coincidence array for K six hundred experiments. It's a, an array of double sided silicon detectors. Uh, and one of the the interesting things that we've noticed um, about the, I mean, here again, I'm showing magnesium 24 because it's currently my favorite, um, is that many of the states which are lying above, you know, this is the alpha particle threshold down here at, at just over 9 MeV. And we see narrow states at almost 16 MeV, um, which are monopole and are isoscalar. Um, and we're not entirely sure why they're so narrow. Um, these are states which are 5 MeV above the particle threshold. Their, their energies are, are comparable to um, the Coulomb barrier. So uh, it's unclear as to why their decay widths are so inhibited um, that they should appear so narrow. Um, I think that there's someone talking. Uh, I'm, was that the chair or? No, no, this was just uh, somebody. OK. I, I thought I might be being uh, ushered off the stage. <laughs> well, you're well in time. Okay. Um, and um, the other useful piece of information that we, we don't currently have, um, we have uh, some some kind of introductory data um, that were, were taken as part of a, a pygmy dipole resonance study, um, but some information on how the gamma ray decays of, of these states um, appear would be useful because um, if I just go back a second, um, the, the prediction is that the, the toroidal state would be k equals 1. Um, and uh, some information on the decay branches may allow us to make some k assignments um, for, for, these, uh, for these states, which would again help to rule in uh, possible cases or rule out possible cases um, uh, to be investigated with, with electron scattering. Uh, on the theory side, um, in magnesium 26, uh, there's rather copious uh, NRF data. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, information on the electric dipole strengths. Um, and now with, with our study, we have a lot of data on the isoscalar dipole transition strengths. Um, currently, we, um, we haven't managed to compare these two. It, it requires uh, some theoretical developments with the, the AMD models. Um, but for example, there was this prediction. I think I think this paper's from 1980 uh, of um, of of the possibility that asymmetric clustering in n not equal to z systems could result in enhanced electrical um, dipole transitions uh, in systems with which would also have enhanced isoscalar dipole transitions. Um, so these would be unusual dipole transitions between isoscalar states with with quite strong B ones. Um, and a lot of this strength that's predicted is, is below the neutron threshold, um, even in some of the heavier nuclei that, that um, but certainly in the cases that we're looking at, the, uh, the neutron threshold in magnesium 24 is at, at about 16 MeV, 
Um, and as you can see from our, our spectra, there's a, a large amount of dipole strength below the neutron threshold. And how this relates to, say, the, the dipole polarizability, whether it should be included or not, is, is I think, something which uh, isn't quite, it's certainly not clear to me. Um, but if other people want to chip in, then that would be uh, appreciated. Um, so in closing, I'd just like to um, say who else is to blame um, for this. Uh, in particular, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Valentin Nesterenko uh, and Masaki Kimura, who um, performed the QRPA and AMD calculations respectively and um, did most of the uh, discussion of, of, of those results. Um, and with that, I'll hand back to the... Oh, actually, uh, and again, I've just put down here the the link to the arc or the, the archive identifier if you um, if you want to, to read more about these uh, these results and I'll hand back to the chair. Okay. Thank you, Phil, for this very enlightening talk about the isoscale of dipole strengths in this uh, N equal set nuclei. And are there any questions directly to Phil from the audience? Please feel free to unmute and then uh, ask your question. Well, if not, <laughs> then I would say everybody is in the mood for coffee. And please feel free to, to, uh, to go for a coffee and I would end this session. Okay. Okay, Marcos, thank you so much for, for everything and thank you. Yeah. Would you have later time? I have for you bad because I was had proposed this gamma gamma prime measurement.